It's your pal, pal. And your pal, Taylor. I'm reporting live from Thompson, Ohio, T-Town. And I am in <laughs> still Akron. <laughs> nice. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. This week, we have the one and only Rylan Slaybaugh coming to talk to us. So I hope you enjoy, Pat. Hi, I'm Rylan Slaybaugh. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. And I'm here on Perspectives with Pal and Pal. <laughs> yes, Pal and yes. Pal. We love it. We're glad you're here. So yeah. it's International Women's Month. And there's also been a ton of topics in the news recently about trans rights and stuff going on in all these different places that are making it difficult for trans people to just live their daily life. So we decided to have Queen Rylan on this week perspectives and we're happy to have her here. So first question I have for you is when did you know you were trans? Was there a certain time? <clears throat> well, I've always known I was female um, since my earliest memories. Uh, <clears throat> I remember being confused at a birthday party when I was told to go with the boys when I'm like, no, I'm a girl. And I was like three or four. Um, so I've always known I was a girl. I didn't have the language or the understanding to know that I was a transgender woman um, until about six or seven. <clears throat> and I remember the moment exactly, actually, I was in the car with my sister and my mother and they were talking about one of the talk shows, Donahue or something like that. And um, they had a person on there who was having what was called at the time a sex change. My ears perked right up and because I didn't know that was even a possibility. So I started looking into it and that's when I started finding the language of being transgender and knowing that there was other people like me um, and that sort of thing. So from that, I guess, what would you say has been the hardest part of this whole journey of, you know, coming out and accepting yourself? Um, the hardest part has been overcoming expectations and guilt. Um, having known I was trans since essentially really little, um, I also learned to hide it really young. And I was pretty good at hiding it. Most people would say that they had no idea. I was, you know, in high school, I was a little ball player and had my girlfriend, who I still do, <laughs> um, <laughs> joined a fraternity in college, whole nine yards, got married, had children. Um, and then all this was because of the attitudes that my family had. Um, towards LGBT people. They were a big joke in my house growing up. Um, they weren't actively like denounced, but they definitely weren't supported. Um, grew up in an evangelical type environment and suffered a lot of religious guilt. And then I had made the choice to marry my wife who was a heterosexual woman. Great fear of losing her and even worse when the children came. So a lot of the stress, a lot of the guilt, a lot of the shame has come from society's expectations, my parents' expectations, uh, the church's expectations, um, of who their definition of who I was and who I should be. It wasn't until recently that I've been able to define myself as who I am, who I was made to be, who I was created as. Yeah, and we know that, like, this is only scratching the surface. Like, obviously, you've lived a lot of time, and all of that plays into your story, but could you tell us a little bit about how it is now since you are living in, like, who you are meant to be? It is so much freer. Just prior to coming out to the whole world, um, I had come out to Heather and my family and whatnot years ago, but before coming out to the whole world and officially starting my transition, that's what a trans person goes from the presenting as the gender that they were assigned at birth to the gender that they feel that they are. Um, just prior to that was a lot, uh, was terrible depression, terrible hopelessness, um, even dissociation from my very being. And transition was an immediate relief, uh, especially from the hopelessness and the dissociation. But I love it. I love not 
having to hide who I am. Um, I love not having to worry who knows. I love being taken and regarded in, in the right manner. Um, not being forced into a role that was not mine. Um, so it's very freeing and liberating and it's wonderful. So Rylan, given all of the like current events and things going on in the world with the trans community and even the LGBTQ community with the bill in Florida, the don't say gay and all the other stuff that's going on, how do you individually, because we all have our own separate ways, but how do you individually combat that negativity in regards to our community? Like I've seen you online on, on the Facebook, like calling out people but in a nice and loving way and also teaching and not just like arguing so where do you get that inner strength to not just like want to deck somebody um sometimes i don't have it and that's what i come out swinging um but i try to i know that's never gonna change anybody's attitude it's not even gonna start um for a lot of people it's not one encounter that you're going to change a mind, change a heart. It's chipping away at that block, encounter by encounter. So every time you do come out swinging and negative and attacking, you're, you know, I'm fighting against myself um, and my intentions. There's a lot of, if you excuse the word, ignorance about transgender people, who we are, how the whole physical transition part works, the labels, the science, everything behind being transgender. I try to tell people and educate them um, about what they may not know, give them a different viewpoint. No, and I definitely, I mean, I always see, like Pal said, your your posts on Facebook. And I mean, for me, it means a lot to see you, you know, like you said, not really attacking them, but educating them. Because I think sometimes some people just aren't aware of you know, some of these basic things. And I think I've seen the most of people's hearts changing from this topic or over this topic through, you know, like these relationships and like hearing people's actual stories. So I think it's awesome, you know, what you're doing out there and sticking up for our community and educating those. (laughs) And that's really the only way you're going to change anybody. It's through relationship. So, yep. yeah. Thanks for taking the time tonight, Ryan, to talk with us and share a little bit about your story. We really appreciate it. Appreciate you. This it's is your, your pal, pal. Then it's your pal, pal. Oh, and your pal, Rylan. <laughs> and this has been. The one and only Perspectives with Pals. We'll see you soon. (laughs) I love this. It sound right, boy.